Okay, so we're here. Hi, YouTube. Subscribers to have your band. I have the honor and I got the opportunity to speak to Dorn Merdinger. Did I spell it right? Merdinger. It's nice meeting you and thank you for inviting us to, uh, to have a conversation with us and uh, tell us about your industry. Now, the funny thing is the reason maybe I should give you a little bit of background how I found you. So what happened was that on one of the uh, Facebook groups that I manage, I saw somebody posted something about the Rony Aerospace and it picked up curiosity because it talked about um, public transportation that it's available for the common person and you use it almost like a car, almost, except that you can go the third dimension as well. Three dimension, exactly. Three dimension. So that's what picked my curiosity and I contacted you, actually your Yakov, I believe. So, and that's how we, I got connected with you uh, and you were kind enough to uh, give us some of your time to explain what's going on. So first, can you give me a little bit of a background about yourself and how did you come to this industry? Well, thank you for coming here, guys. So uh, I was originally born in Israel. Uh, as a kid, I was a geek and I'm still am a geek. I had asthma at that time, so I didn't do much coming out of my room. So I used to build and create, very creative kid. I used to basically fix everything in the house and for my neighbors, all stereo systems, electronics, electricity. I was, I'm still very curious. I think it's very important for a person in general to, to maintain his, you know, his, uh, his being as a child, maintain his playfulness. So for me, this was always and still is things that I do in my life. In high school, I studied microelectronics and computers, um, and again in Israel, and then in, in the Army, I was in the Air Force, um, Air Force Intelligence working with drones. Uh, since Israel is the forefront of working with drones uh, for surveillance and for other uh, operational uh, requirements, um, you know, we were there all along and to see how this thing was picking up and developed. Obviously, the beginning at that time, we had you know motors that were working uh, on fuel, not really on anything. There was no electricity at that time. From there on, you know, um, I I went on after the Air Force. I basically graduated from New York, uh, NYU Stern School of Business in, in finance, international business. So I got the background over there, and then worked at a back went back to Israel, worked at a family business, managed a very big um, business in in, uh, in uh, silverware, which is a production of big artifacts and a lot of development, a lot of CNC, a lot of, I introduced a lot of new technologies of there through 3D printing, 3D modeling, which was very new at that time. At one point we just moved to the US. Uh, the whole family or just you? No, just my wife, three kids, nine years ago. We were able to come in uh, in their special visa, for special talent visa. Basically when I worked with 3D modeling, 3D printing, it was really the pioneering stage. I'm talking about 17, 18 years ago. Not too many people knew about that. I probably had one of the first printers of 3D printers in Israel in general and uh, I created you know many things in three-dimensional there for me everything was as far as the development was like making new, th new stuff new creative new technology technologies today are amazing about um, about I think it was something like over five six years ago um, I remember myself uh, driving in a traffic uh, jam very condensed everything was you know like uh, you know getting uh, uh, a lot of uh, tension because you know the traffic's not moving, somebody's stuck, whatever. And then you see this kid on the side, you know, playing with a drone, right? When we are stuck in the traffic, it's like, why can't we use that as as a motor of of transportation for ourselves? And what's the you know what's the challenge of scaling it up, right? It it sounds easy, it's not so easy. But at that point, I started researching around the globe to find those talents because really you need to find talents to help you move forward. You can't. Uh, just take a small drone and you know make it bigger because there's a lot of other things involved You have to have you know, special motors. You have to have special batteries special technologies special computer system And of course you have a person inside. It's a whole new ball game I started looking around, you know people told me listen the batteries is not there the motors are not there and really who you know Many people told me who is gonna you know crazy who's gonna drive a car or a three-dimensional car and you know I was I was ridiculed laughed at at that point, but 
you know, a lot of things in my life, I saw things are coming before the time. And at one point I got a phone call from my mother-in-law and she goes like, Jerome, you know, I'm very angry at you. And I was like, what did I do wrong? And she says, remember, you know, 10 years ago, and it was like probably 15 years ago, you said you're going to be have a watch that you're able to communicate with a person, see, you know, and I, you know, and I said, yes. And she says, so why didn't you do it? Because, you know, I was, I was always creating. It's, you know, that's, my, that's what I like to do. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah, what's wrong with you? You know, I was like, I thought I did something, you know, to my, to my wife or something to my kid, you know, <laughs> what was wrong? And, um, and it was interesting because that also gave me a lot of push to take, you know, to leap forward. I started researching around, researching the other web. I found very um, talented people in the U.S. and outside the U.S., you know, being the background that I come, you know, um, parents came from the Holocaust, you know, I, you know, and they communicate always with different languages and different cultures. It was easy for me, not, you know, I'm using English, but it was easy for me to relate and to communicate with people, you know, from the Ukraine, from the UK, you know, I reach out to Australia, Japan, everywhere, you know, the US obviously. And we had those, you know, the, we created this team. I like to look at them as geek, like me, as anarchist in a way. They look at things differently. You, it's not necessarily the ones who finish MIT, you know, with the highest honors or Caltech, no. These are guys who really worked physically and are very curious and very motivated and they have the ability to create. But since this is a new, it's a new breed, it's a new animal, you know, it's some, something different. We, you know, we had to think about different. So we had to think about the motors, we had to think about the, you know, aerodynamics, we had to think about the batteries. So I took, from what I found was the best team, you know, I was able to, to create. It was everything online at the beginning. And uh, we started building different prototypes. Um, we checked, you know, the systems and everything was new. And again, you know, people were laughing at us, you know, who's going to do that, who's going to use that? But as a kid who watched, you know, um, I was, you know, I, I watched Star Trek, I watched uh, 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 Fifth Element, all those movie, you know, uh, Blade Runner, we knew they were coming. You know, all these books of Jules Verne, you know, 30,000 30, miles, you know, below and the, the flight to the moon, everything happened. So all those things, we knew they're going to be happening. I mean, it's, it's uh, just a matter of time. And, and then, you know, look at what's going on around you in the cities. And you mean, there's no other way, basically, to, to, to transport or commute, you know, if looking forward. You can't solve those issues. And this is a whole new ball game by excavating underground because, you know, it's too expensive. It's not really efficient. I mean, how do you go to the last mile? How do you get there, you know, even to, to the train station, right? And the next thing is, so, okay, so autonomous vehicles, people saying autonomous. No, man, autonomous cannot, cannot solve that issue because there are so many parameters that needs to be at the same time. First of all, for, you know, just make sure, make it understand there's a human factor and there's a machine factor driving, commuting in the two dimensional, you know, road. So um, a person, the decision making is probably 75% irrational. It's a, it's a researchers that was done. Then the next thing is, okay, do you have to have like an internet, like is a 10 to 12G to, to be able to trans, you know, transfer all this information at, at, um, at the same time? At the same time, cars. yeah. The second thing is you have to have a huge, enormous computer that, which is not built today that we're able to get all these data and process yeah. at the right time, yeah. Let's say they solve this issue as well. And only people, uh, only autonomous cars will be fine, but it's still it's two dimensional. So the next level is you go, you know, three levels, right? You go multi levels. And, you, and the thing is about autonomous v or, or flying cars or e, you know, EV tolls, you don't really need to have uh, to fly at 10,000 feet or 20,000 feet because you're going to endanger aircraft. There are levels that you need just to have clearance, a couple of hundreds of feet. I'm sure you know it very well. There are categories or classes of airspace. So anything above 1200 AGL or 700, depending on where it is, uh, it's controlled by ATC. So how are you going to approach this, this okay, uh, so, challenge? Okay, so first of all, the, the, the H1 or our aircraft is built to get up to, up to 8,000. So we, we are still in a comfortable zone, but then we don't need to get there. Our flying comfortable is a couple of hundreds of feet. Because think about that, uh, you know, an EVTOL doesn't go, it doesn't fly, you know, it doesn't have to take over a runway. There's no runway here. 
So essentially, the highest it goes vertical, the more uh, en energy it will consume. And the higher the, uh, the, you know, the altitude, the less congested it, so the more RPM he needs to produce. You know, the air is less dense. So, and we don't need to go there. The, really, there's no point. You know? So we're talking a couple of hundreds of feet, and we can even fly 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. It, you know, it's, just, uh, it's a vehicle that doesn't need roads, and the way it flies, it goes, you know, it's like, if you look at the sky, basically, I don't know if you're aware, there's many softwares that are already now in the process of you know, certification with the FAA. I think even NASA has one. What they do is, you look, it's called corridors. Basically, they, it, they will work like a three-dimensional elevators because the drone is very accurate, right? It knows exactly itself in the, in the three-dimensional world. It has multi-sensors and lighter to the ground. In our case, we're integrating uh, optic flow camera as well, take pictures, right? In our case, 360 degree of anti-collision sensors. So it knows itself in you know, the three-dimensional world and, and then the flight and even the landing is very accurate. As far as certification, there's already some EVTOLs of one person that I think they're being certified as we call ultralight. And, and there's uh, the other one, which is part 23, which are the air taxi, which is, this is the most complicated form of certification. They take four or five people into the city and into the airports, right? And these are six to 7,000 aircraft. We, we're not going there. You know, a taxi, you know, building it for a taxi services, but rather for personal use. Yeah, very, very simple. Because we understand that at the end of the day, we are going wheelless. Everybody's going to own one because it's charged at home, very simple to use. Think about a Tesla compared to a car, you know, electric. You know, we are charging and, and the maintenance compared to a regular aircraft of combustion engines that keep vibrating, keep burning, and, you know, uh, and everything has a lot of uh, high maintenance. We are not there, right? So we understand that there's, you know, obviously issues with batteries that can, you know, at this point, will limit compared to other, you know, combustion engines. But, you know, to be honest, I'm not concerned about that much for many reasons. There, there are a lot of things happening in batteries. One of the things which is, you know, this is our guiding rule. At the beginning when the iPhone came out, it lasted 30 minutes. Now it lasts days. So the battery technologies always will keep up with the requirements of the market. So this is the first thing. The second thing is we see the initiatives. We see that the US government announced by 2030 at least 50% of the cars going to be electric. And we see how many cars are already going electric. I mean, I mean every major car manufacturer is going electric. Yeah, they've been doing it for years. I remember, but ten, even 15 years ago, actually, Toyota was one of the first ones that yeah. came up with the hybrid. Exactly. I remember actually driving it. Toyota came out with new batteries, I think also Hyundai, that's called solid state, which solid state is also a game changer in our, it's a, a more con con just condensed, condensed energy battery, less weight, more energy. And this will be, you know, make our flight more efficient economically, you know, as far as, as prices. So what's right now, uh, by the way, do you have a prototype or you're working on a, proto a prototype? Yeah, we are, we basically we lifted this one. This is the 643, we lifted all eight motors. Uh, now it's out of commission because we tested so many motors, so many things. But now what we're building is the H1P1, exactly what you saw uh, here in the back. This one. This, in a few months, this should be ready. Cool. And this should be flyable. You'll have to notify us. Let us, let me know. Oh, this one. You come and uh, see the progress. It uh, looks really interesting. Yeah, now you can see inside there is the frame, carbon frame. Uh, so what you see here, this is, this is the internal part, right? So we have the batteries, one, two, three, it's four. It's really modular. Yeah. The whole idea of this is to simplify everything that you can think of. Just take the, just leave the fun part of, of traveling, you know, wheelless, but basically have everything, uh, everything out clean, simple, and very, very user friendly. This will not be our, uh, our how the H1 actually be built inside because we have other features that we, this is the H1P1. It will look very similar. We are working on two models. This is the model that we're working now to, you know, uh, as a prototype, flying prototype, but the actual go-to-market will, will look a little bit different. Not a lot, the same base of, you know, propulsion system, but will look different. You can see here also some of the features. For example, you know, 
the idea is like this you 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 know you walk around the Doroni H1 and check that everything is in order this is probably the maintenance the most of the maintenance that we'll you know have to say everything is get good uh, the system will be also sending information to our main headquarters all the time to see that everything is in order you go inside and you sit and there will be basically one screen and you can put your iPads. This will be an iPad, and this will. Be, we, it's already the design is already changed. This is <laughs> we keep updating things. This is already changed. Okay, so once you go like this, there will be a button. You hit, you know, start. You hear audible. Uh, the only system check, and then the rotor ready for takeoff. At that point, propeller will start turning on idle, and you know your iPad will be here, and you get information on this screen. If you are left or right pilot. Um, uh, it will change. I guess if you get tired, your passenger can take over. Yeah, exactly. So, th so, so this is the last touch will will take control. And the the flight, you know, it's I'm saying flight, but it's not really a flight. <laughs> it's I mean, you're flying, yes, but it's not like it, it doesn't resemble a helicopter. It doesn't resemble an aircraft, a regular aircraft. Uh, because you don't have to, you don't have pedals, you don't have, you know, anything besides... So no thing. rudders? No, nothing. Basically, the autopilot will control everything. So you have eight motors here. And the way you go about it is you have the hot air and you want to go higher. You start, you know, toggling here and then you start going three feet, four feet, five, six feet. And everything, remember, there's no combustion, there's no vibration at the level of a regular uh, 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 helicopter and it's self-balancing, right? It has a gyro, internal gyro, accelerometron. And, and so you have eight motors that will start lifting. And then the joystick is very intuitive. You go this, you fly forward. You go this, you, you fly backwards. This, you, you, you bank. So if you stay still and you go like this, it will start swiveling. But if you go forward like this, it will start flying with, you know, banking a little bit to the left. And if you don't know what to do, you just drop your hands off, it will maintain its location. So they're stationary. Stationary in there, the exactly the same altitude, it knows exactly. When you say you have autopilot, so what do you do? You put the point on the, on the flight plan? You yeah, the autopilot, the, um, it can do that. We don't know yet if this is something we will use for certification because the, uh, the FAA uh, 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 is still concerned about you know t uh, autonomous uh, aircraft. It will be semi-autonomous at the beginning because there's enough complications uh, at this point. So, but the, when I say autopilot, it means that, that the, the, the controller, computer controller, will control your position in the air and you don't need to basically balance it uh, like with a helicopter with pedals and, you know, the rewarders and everything. So this is very simple. The prototype, how long do you envision it being able to main, uh, stay in the air? So what we, what we have now, the prototype that is in the making now with the batteries, this is just for a couple of minutes for us to show that, you know, we have the control system, check everything that works. Uh, uh, the actual product go to market, it's between 40 minutes to one hour, between 60 miles and 100 miles. And how long will it take to uh, charge after that? Uh, charge is we, a fast charge you should do somewhere between 20, 25 minutes, uh, depends on, you know, the, the, the status of the battery, how depleted it is. But this is what we expect, I think from 20% on this is the fast charger but I guess it's going to improve oh yeah the, again again it's going to improve but we understand already the experience of 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 flying so this is something that you know when you sit inside and you have all that feeling and the control I mean, you're going to be falling in love with this I mean there's really no other thing to compare because of the Ferrari of the sky because of the design of it but everything is, is but ev <laughs> that's the, my that's the car that I love. Yeah. But everything is we, we already know the fabrics, we know the interior design, it's not here, we're working on that, you know, with a, a special seat. Have a small storage space very yeah. for women. For women, to store the women? No. <laughs> to store yes, there are. Yeah, but not in the, I, I don't think in this one, but uh, here in the back because we went to crowdfunding and this was interesting it's not like just people invested we got a lot of people who wanted to pre-order and there is a lot of questions they asked us so here you see the bags in the back so essentially it's not geared to use on a road per se to drive there's no need to drive 